Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Incorporating Sustainability into the Student Experience. Uh, for those of you who don't know who, about GBSN, the Global Business School Network, we are a leading network of business schools working to improve management and business education in emerging markets. And we do this both through programs, networking, and events. We are comprised of 50 member schools in 25 countries. Each school does go through an application process and must be engaged with our mission of improving business education in emerging markets. If there's any schools interested in joining, please feel free to send me an email. And we can certainly talk about the application process. And my name is Lisa Leander. I'll be the moderator today. I'm the Member Services Officer with the Global Business School Network. I'm the first point of contact for all of our member schools. I also oversee all of our events. I'm also very pleased to introduce our presenter today. Her name is Giselle Weibrich. She's a leading author and consultant. Um, most recently, she authored The Sustainable MBA, The Manager's Guide to Green Business, published in 2010. Uh, prior to this, she worked many years with the United Nations internationally in sustainable de development. And today she works with governments, universities, NGOs, business, and with social entrepreneurs and sustainability around the world. Um, she's also uh, an author of the blog, Primetime, uh, in collaboration with the UN Global Compact. And she brings together both best practice on sustainability and responsible leadership. I think this is a very interesting topic. I'm very excited to, to learn more. Uh, good morning, Dizal. Welcome for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for the introduction. And good morning to everybody. And uh, welcome to the webinar on incorporating sustainability into the student experience. I thought that what we'd do is start with a poll. If we could put the poll up. And so if you could all set up this poll quickly, uh, the question is, how much experience do you have with sustainability issues? And you have a few choices there. So if you could take a couple of seconds to, to quickly fill that out before we get started. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, a whole lot of different examples around sustainability and how it's being incorporated into schools. If you don't hear your school mentioned, don't worry. Uh, we uh, Feel free to tell me some of the fantastic examples that your school has as well, and I'd love to include those in future presentations. I always include slightly different examples in all my presentations. OK, so we've already got our poll. So good, so there's quite a bit of knowledge. So let's switch to the presentation. Oops. OK, here we go. <laughs> so uh, let me start by telling you a little bit about me. Um, I've been working in this field since I was very young, in the field of sustainable development and then sustainability, which are, are quite related. Uh, as what Lisa mentioned, I worked with the UN for many years. I was advisor to the Canadian government on sustainability issues and uh, worked with quite a few NGOs. But I left in 2005 to do an MBA, and I did my MBA at London Business School. My colleagues at the time, they went into shock. Uh, a lot of them thought that the business sector was the cause of all of the problems that we were trying to solve and that the MBA was evil. <laughs> so. Um, but I thought that it was important to do the MBA to, to learn the language and to understand the kinds of people that were going into business and the way that the business sector thought about sustainability. When I started the MBA, I was quite surprised. I was surprised that there was some interest. The students were interested in sustainability, but they didn't realize, uh, they thought it was a choice. They thought that they either went into sustainability or they went into traditional business careers. And during the MBA, the majority of them decided that they were going to go into to traditional business careers. I was also surprised, and this wasn't just in my program, this was in a lot of the programs that, that I uh, experienced, was that these issues just weren't being brought up in class. And when they were, they weren't being brought up in a way that was very relevant or useful to the majority of the students. So in the second year of my MBA and, and after my MBA, I started looking at how could you embed sustainability into management education. So how could you make sure that all of these students that are graduating from the MBA have this knowledge and know how to apply it to their jobs? I started speaking with deans, with students, faculty, and ended up speaking with uh, over 120 representatives from business, everything from CEOs to heads of sustainability, and wrote the book. Uh, my book came out in 2010 called The Sustainable MBA, The Manager's Guide to Green Business. The book, what it does is it introduces sustainability as it relates to all the core topics in an MBA, uh, and basically explains to individuals how they can bring sustainability into any job. It's being used by lots of companies in the business sector, Unilever, Patagonia, Shell, 
but also quite a few business schools, not just on recommended and required reading lists, but also to train faculty, uh, which was, I was quite happy about. So today I do a lot of work around the world with business schools as a consultant, a teacher, a trainer, an advisor. Uh, really my focus is on making sure that this next generation of business leaders not only understand these issues, but know how to implement them. So that's just a little bit about me. Let's give a quick overview of what sustainability is. I know that from the poll, you all have a very good idea of what sustainability is already, but I'll give you my definition. Uh, to me, sustainability is an interdisciplinary approach that questions the fundamental assumptions around how we do business. In the sense, it takes business apart and puts it back together in ways that make more sense for the environment, for society, but also for the business. And that's very important. Uh, it's a very exciting business reality, one that individuals and companies want to get involved in, and one that businesses are increasingly benefiting from. The challenge for business schools is that this is this word sustainability. It's such a massive word. And the word itself encompasses so many different things from ethics, business and society, not-for-profit, international development, all the way to increased efficiency, new product development, innovation. So it is quite a challenge when you're talking about how do you incorporate all of these different topics into the MBA program. So what I'm finding that the leaders are doing is they're taking two approaches. First of all, they're looking at how they can embed these issues into their core curriculum to make sure that all the students are getting information about this. And then second, what they're doing is they're creating uh, a range of additional opportunities for students who are interested in learning more about these topics to be able to either specialize or join clubs or take electives, etc. So what I was saying before is you know, management education plays such a key role for sustainability. Uh, really, I don't think, personally, I don't think sustainability can move forward unless management education starts playing a, a greater role. First of all, because there's some estimates that over 60% of all managers have an MBA of some sort. And of course, this doesn't even count all of those students, executives, uh, leaders, managers that go through the doors of, of business schools for different training programs. So you have a huge amount of influence over the way that the business sector views these issues. Second, business schools have a very important role to play in their communities. There are lots of businesses in communities around the world that aren't exactly sure how to move forward on these issues. And they're looking for guidance. And business schools could really play uh, an important role in providing that guidance. The other thing with the business school is that it's perfectly structured to train managers to be able to apply sustainability to business sector. In the business sector, in order to move forward with sustainability, you need to get all the different parts of the business involved. This isn't something that's happening in the marketing or PR department. This is something where you need to get the finance department involved, HR, marketing, strategy, operations. They all have a role to play. And the MBA is the only degree that actually trains managers in all those different areas. So if you can include sustainability in all those different areas, um, I'd like to say that we have no problems in the business sector. <laughs> And last but not least, and this is something I think the MBAs don't do enough, it could, the MBA could really be an opportunity to uh, explore, test, and create innovative solutions to the world's business problems and getting students involved in that as well. So what is it that we're going to cover today? Uh, this is something that I've been calling uh, here the, the student life cycle. So what we're going to do is look at uh, the whole life cycle, let's say, of the students going through your program and all the different things that are happening around sustainability in those different areas. I don't have huge amounts of time, so I'm going to tell you as many examples as I can. Of course, you know, I could speak to you for the next week about this. Uh, but uh, again, if you don't hear your school, it's not because you're not doing fantastic work. It's uh, every time I change the examples, because there are really so many interesting examples of things happening around the world in this area. So we're going to start with recruiting. So in terms of recruiting, there are more and more students that are interested in sustainability issues uh, and looking for business schools that are approaching these issues. This, I, these are the kinds of students that I see in my experiences. I find that you've got a group of students that are asking for it by name. Uh, they're looking for programs that have the word sustainability in them. They're looking for certificate programs, et cetera. You've got another group that expects it to be part of a quality business school. This is what's happening in business. Uh, they're doing business school because they want to know what's happening in business, and so they expect it to be part of the program. Another group, and I find this is quite a big group, they're interested, but they're not quite sure how it fits into their career. I hear a lot of students saying, you know, it's a choice. They either go and work for a not-for-profit or they go work for business. 
uh, but they can't do both. And of course, that's, that's not the choice necessarily. Uh, there are a lot of ways that they can incorporate sustainability into their careers in the business sector, and this is what, what I'm hoping that they'll do. There's quite a few students uh, that I find that aren't exactly sure what it is. They think they know what sustainability is, but I'm amazed at how many students I speak with who think it's all about climate change, because that's what they hear the most in the media. And of course, as many of you know, sustainability is about a lot more than, than just climate change. And then, of course, you always have that group of students who aren't interested. But having said that, in my course, I remember there were quite a few students that had no interest at all in what I was talking about. But years later, now uh, it's been a few years since I graduated, I find a lot of them are calling me and asking to see the book. And what's happened is that they've moved from these quant-heavy jobs that they had right after they graduated into more strategic leadership roles where this is becoming more of an issue for them. So I'm gonna, we have some survey results as well. Uh, I helped out with a survey with Carrington Crisp last year called The Business of Branding. And what we did is we surveyed incoming prospective and students and also alumni about their views on a range of things, but we added some questions around sustainability. We found that 64% of the full-time MBA students thought that sustainability was important or very important to the degrees. There are quite a few studies out there that are showing that sustainability is important to the students. Uh, a lot of studies in the US are actually showing that Students will look at the information on sustainability before making a choice on the schools. Babson University here in the US, they did something interesting. They actually do a survey of their incoming students, and they ask them what are the most important issues to them. And they've found lately that sustainability is uh, always in the top two of the issues that their incoming students find are the most important. We also found that less than 10% of the respondents wanted specialized degrees. Now, 10% isn't a huge amount, but at the same time, it is quite a significant number. And you see this, I get emails every day of programs around the world that are starting sustainable MBA programs. So very much focused on sustainability. Uh, in the US, there are some that have been around for a long time, Presidio and Bainbridge. There's a new program in the UK that I've been taking a look at, which is called the One Planet MBA. This is with the University of Exeter. And they've paired up with a large international NGO called WWF. And basically, the idea is that the students, and they have quite a large incoming uh, first class that started this past September, they get to benefit from the networks of the NGO and the business partners of that NGO uh, through this MBA program. The approach that I quite like and that a lot of schools are looking at is how it's giving the students the flexibility. So a lot of programs have certificate programs that all of their students have access to and no additional charge uh, in the MBA. Queen's University in Canada has a certificate program where the students need to take a range of elective classes. They need to do some work in the community, some consulting work. They also need to attend a series of events and conferences. And if they fulfill all those requirements, they get their certificate. Another area that students are looking at to find out how schools are doing are the rankings. There are so many rankings. We're kind of in this ranking explosion time when it comes to uh, sustainability and MBAs. There's some good ones. I mean, there's some that are particular to different countries. The Knight School Surveys in Canada, People and Planet in the UK, Green Gown Awards in uh, Australia. Uh, I find a lot of these surveys, you don't necessarily see the best schools coming up on these surveys. As some of you, I'm sure, have experienced, it's often the schools that have the resources to fill out the multitude of surveys that get sent out. A lot of the surveys also, or a lot of these rankings, are around environmental issues on campus. And not all of them are looking at the actual content of the courses. But students are looking at these more and more. And what's interesting for you is that a lot of these awards and surveys and networks uh, have the surveys that schools fill out with all the information about what they're doing in sustainability, all that is available online on these different websites. So it's a really interesting resource to be able to go and to learn more about what these schools are doing. Uh, I have down there the, the logo for the Principles for Responsible Management Education. Same thing, all of their members have to submit uh, a report every year, every couple of years, that outlines what they're doing in terms of sustainability. And a lot of them will put up uh, information about different courses and electives that they've developed 
and all of that is on the uh, is on the website, and you can access uh, that's all accessible. One of the surveys that's kind of the most popular that I hear people at schools talking about the most is the Beyond Gay Prince type. This one uh, has mostly American schools. There are some international schools, uh, and again, all of this information, all the information about these schools and the courses. Uh, that they provide is available on the BN Grave and Stripes website. So that's a, a good resource as well. The big thing when it comes to recruitment is I find a lot of this will happen word of mouth. I get about 10 emails a day from students asking me what program they should go on. And I'm amazed at programs, for example, in Nottingham where I never heard anybody talking about the MBA in Nottingham, but now I hear students around the world talking about the, the sustainability program at Nottingham. So in a sense, it's put them on the map for me and for a lot of other international uh, students. So, uh, so that's very important as well. If you have a very strong program and an interesting and unique program, people will talk about it. So once you get your students, you have you, you bring them on campus. It's very important to send in the right messages from day one. Uh, making sure that you're sending those consistent messages about sustainability be important to your school, uh, enter the program right away when they get on campus. Every school organizes themselves differently. I haven't found that there's one way that's better or worse than another. Uh, some schools have interdisciplinary teams. Some have champions in the different disciplines. Uh, the, in uh, Australia, at La Trobe University, they have a pro-vice chancellor for sustainability. Her name is Carol. And one of her responsible, the, uh, excuse me, responsibilities last year was to put together the sustainability report for La Trobe University. A lot of schools are doing sustainability reports. This is a really interesting exercise of just bringing the university together, finding out what's happening across the university, and, uh, and educating the university about these issues. La Trobe is one of only about 30 schools in the world that have used the GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative uh, framework for the report. GRI, for those of you who haven't heard it before, this is a framework that a lot of businesses, the majority of big businesses around the world, are using to create their sustainability reports. The challenge for educational institutions is that this is very much focused on environmental, social, and economic issues, but not so much on those issues that are specific to academic institutions, like research and teaching. But there is an initiative right now through the UN Global Compact to make a set of GRI uh, guidelines specific for academic institutions. So that's something. Uh, to keep an eye out for. You also have quite a few examples of sustainable campus. I'm sure you're all doing something on your campuses around sustainability. Uh, green buildings is very popular, especially in the US. Uh, this is a university that has solar panels over their car park. Thebes in China is the first carbon neutral school in Asia, and that was a student-initiated uh, uh, project. University of Canberra, they have eliminated all water bottles on campus and have other options where students are given reusable water bottles. And they have these machines, which you see at the bottom of this picture, where students can actually refill their reusable water bottles with filtered water. A lot of schools, University of San Diego, uh, in London as well, they have farmers markets. And uh, AIM is the first school to be ISO 14001 certified. So there's, I mean, these are just a few. There's so many examples of how you can green your campus. My biggest piece of advice is to use your students. If you're not sure how to green your campus, your students are there and they want to get involved. And I love some of these programs that are coming out of schools where they're finding ways to get their students to green the campus themselves. Istanbul, Vilgi in uh, Turkey, they actually have an elective class that students sign up for, and the elective class is the greening the campus class. So what students are doing is they're taking baseline measurements on waste, energy, water, and coming up with some strategies on how they can make the campus more sustainable. And each year, the new group of students will take that information and move forward with it. The Terrible uh, University in the US, Grenoble in France, they both have similar programs. At Grenoble, it's not an elective. It's actually uh, kind of an extracurricular activity. The other thing that campuses are doing is they're providing some funds to help students who have ideas on how to green the campus. The University of Washington has this campus sustainability fund uh, that you can apply for money. ICN in France, they have a fund for faculty who are looking at doing research projects and incorporating sustainability into their teaching. 
the other important thing is it's not just looking at campus, but also looking at the messages that you're sending to your students. So it's important to look at how you can bring those messages right away into the first day of the program. And this is often in that first initiation week, which I'm sure you will have. Uh, two quick examples, Babson in the US, they had a great program that started this year, which was called 30 Days, uh, or from day one. And what they did is they had students create short two-minute videos on YouTube that outlined a whole range of different activities that were happening on campus around sustainability. And every day, for 30 days, a different initiative was featured. HHL in Germany, they had a day where they paired with a local business. Uh, in their case, it was Porsche, which is quite a fancy local business. But the day was all about how can you make both business school and business more sustainable, and how, why is it important to both business and the business school. So I thought that was an interesting approach to pair with the business. So you have them on campus, and then, of course, you start teaching. And this is where the majority of the discussion is happening now uh, with business schools and faculty, is how do you incorporate sustainability into the teaching, and in particular in a way that's useful and relevant. So this is very important. I'm speaking with a lot of students, and, I, and I've sat in a lot of classes where sustainability is being brought up but it's not necessarily being brought up in a way that's useful to the students or useful to the majority of students who aren't necessarily going into careers that have the word sustainability into them, but need to understand how they can apply this to whatever job and career they go into post-graduation. Uh, coming back to the business of branding survey, there are a couple more stats that I wanted to share with you. We found that one in four students expected sustainability to be part of the core curriculum. We also found that 70% thought that when it was, it was presented as an add-on, and it was often presented as a save the world approach. So this is to show that it's, uh, it's really important, not just bringing it up in classes, but the way that you bring it up. The majority, I'm sure all of your schools, uh, all schools around the world have some sort of ethics and business systems in society class. There's a, a big movement now from a lot of the leading schools to clean up these classes, in a sense and to try to make them more useful and relevant to the students. I have one example here from Argentina, IAE. They've been working on their ethics class, and they've been doing some interesting things. What they've done is they're trying to develop an ethics network across the country. And so they've been working with ethics officers in different uh, regional and national countries, uh, trying to help them in the work that they're doing in their businesses. But what they also do is they invite these ethics officers into the classroom. And the ethics officers will bring in some of the problems that they have experienced in the past or are experiencing and see what the students come up with in terms of their solutions. And then they have this back and forth in terms of, OK, well, that might work, or no, that wouldn't work because such and such, et cetera. So really making it a little bit more useful for the students. Faculty, of course, are key. Uh, faculty are the least transient group in the university. They're the ones that stick around. So they're the most <laughs> important ones. Uh, there's a lot of work being done trying to educate faculty about sustainability and how it relates to their discipline. A lot of faculty, I do a lot of faculty workshops, and I find often that some of the faculty that seem to be really against this, it's not always that they're against it. Often it's that they don't see how it's relevant to their course, or they don't have the time to incorporate it, or they really don't understand exactly what the issues are. So a lot of schools right now are doing, FCC in Brazil is a very good example, uh, really looking at how you can uh, raise awareness with your faculty and give them the tools to be able to incorporate uh, sustainability into the core courses and into their electives. And you also have some schools like Barna in the Dominican Republic in Santo Domingo. They have they've included into the student um, uh, how the students judge the faculty, how they've taught sustainability, if they've actually taught it in a useful and relevant way. There's a growing number of resources. There's so many resources uh, that faculty can use now. And uh, there are lots of case studies being developed. You've got some of the, the big, you know, caseplace.org uh, is a good place to look for cases around sustainability. Open Courseware Consortium is another. If you haven't seen that, I'm sure most of you have experienced these case databases. I mean, there are quite a few. But there's an interesting movement now, which I like, is where what local and regional areas are trying to develop more case studies for their region. Uh, Kuzminski is working with uh, a range of business schools in Central and Eastern Europe, and they're putting together a database of case studies around sustainability and their local and regional businesses in particular that are more relevant to their students. Tecnológico de Monterrey in Mexico 
what they've done is they've actually sent the students out. Uh, and this picture is a picture of one of their students, uh, Rina. Uh, they sent the students out to write case studies of local businesses in the community around sustainability and how these local businesses are approaching sustainability. They present these case studies in class, and then some of the best ones make it on to the Spanish uh, case study network. So if any of you are uh, from Spanish-speaking countries, you can go on to the Spanish case study network, and you can actually use some of these mini case studies written by students in Mexico. You've also got electives that you can play around with. There are lots of really innovative electives. Uh, the ones that I like the most are the ones where the faculty are pairing up with local businesses, providing an extra uh, dynamic to the courses. A quick example, University of Denver, they've paired up with Deutsche Bank, and they have a course on microfinance, where students spend half the class in the classroom learning about microfinance. And then the rest of the time, they're actually working with Deutsche Bank, looking at loan applications, and then going into developing countries and actually working with the banks there. So that's an interesting approach, and the students that go through those courses absolutely love them. Uh, I don't have enough time to tell you all of the fantastic electives. Another one, Alto in Finland, but a lot of schools are doing this. They have these kind of save the world electives, where at Alto, at least, what the students are doing is they have to write a report about a problem they see in the community and a potential solution to that problem. And then they have to go out in groups and actually implement that solution. Uh, so that's another interesting approach for students. And students love the, the opportunity to actually go out and do something. We've already spoken a, a little bit about community. And it's really important, uh, and this is a fantastic opportunity for, for faculty and for business schools to get more involved in the community and to work with the community when it comes to these issues. We saw IAE in Argentina and their network of ethics officers. Euromed in France have a, a network of CSR officers and sustainability officers in France. We've got University of Stellenbosch in South Africa, where they're working very closely with all of the different groups that are in the vicinity of the business school, everything from local schools to local businesses, etc. You have a lot of programs, too, where uh, they're partnering with businesses who have some, some uh, questions. This picture at the top, this is Kimberly Clark, which is a company here in the US. And what they've done is they have this blue material, which is used for operating tables. And it's not recyclable. And they've actually been approaching schools, asking them uh, to come up with some options on how they could reuse this material. And the, it's fantastic what the students are coming up with, everything from tents for refugee camps, uh, to toys for children, all, all sorts of different things. So there's also the opportunity to connect with the businesses in your community. You've got, of course, everything that happens outside of the classroom, all the experiences that the students go through. Uh, student clubs, I'm sure all of the schools here have some sort of a student club on campus that's looking at sustainability. Some of the big ones that are part of international networks, so things like Net Impact, ASIC, OICOS, Students and Free Enterprise, one of the recommendations here is I find what I, what I find happens a lot is the students in these clubs, they kind of stick together. And the other students that aren't part of this club, they don't necessarily get uh, exposure to the things that are happening in these clubs. So one of the things uh, that you can do is, for example, if you have an event in a club which is around sustainability and marketing, get the marketing club involved as well. And this is a really great way to expand the reach of these sustainability issues. You can also bring experiences into the core courses. A couple of quick examples, Rose University in South Africa, in their information management class, the students are actually crunching numbers for a local health NGO. Uh, so this is a way that they get that learning, but they're also contributing to the society around them. Operations class, Kosminski in Poland, they have students doing uh, environmental waste, energy audits for local businesses. So there are lots of different ways that you can bring in these student experiences into these core courses as a way to expose your students around sustainability. If you have any uh, examples of things that you're doing throughout this whole presentation, feel free to go to the chat area and to type those up. And we can take a look at some of those at the end. Some more student experiences. Consulting is very popular. I find that students that are sent to do consulting work with local companies and international companies they absolutely love it, and they talk about it. And this is how, when we were talking before about word of mouth, this is how other students that are looking at programs, these are some of the, the, the programs that they get attracted to, because they want to have those same kind of experiences. So consulting, 
events. There are so many different events now around sustainability. I didn't have access to any of these events when I was in business school. You have international contests that are organized by business schools, but more and more you have contests that are organized by businesses that no matter where your students are, you can, uh, you can get them involved in these programs. Lots of big businesses will pose, pro will pose challenges. Uh, and uh, a lot of times it's students that are winning these challenges and the money that's associated with the challenges. One here, I've put up PME Leaders Plus 20 competition, because this might be interested to some of you. This is being run by our house university. And the winners are going to be going to Rio for the Rio Plus 20 Summit in June to present uh, the winning entries. And the contest, just in a nutshell, you can find out more on the website. But what they're doing is they're trying to find pairs of faculty and students who are coming up with innovative ideas for new courses or ways to change existing courses to incorporate sustainability. So if you have some of those ideas, submit them to the contest. Because you, know, you never know, you could inspire other people, or you, you, you could win and go to, to Brazil. Uh, some other examples. At the bottom, we've got board fellows. This is something that the American schools, I'm sure, have heard of. But nobody out of the US seems to have ever heard of this. It, I think it's a very good idea. What they do is you put students as non-voting volunteer board members for local not-for-profits and NGOs. And this is a great way for those not-for-profits not to have some additional resources. But also, it's a great way for your students to learn more about the community. And what a lot of these programs are finding, the programs are either student-run or organized by the university, is that the students will stay involved with these NGOs post-graduation as well. The last is an example that doesn't have so much to do with sustainability, but I think it's a good idea and something that could be adapted to sustainability. This is a store called Spell at Singapore Airport. It's run entirely by students from Singapore Polytechnic Institute. These are business students, accounting students, fashion, engineering students. They're responsible for every element of this business. And they're judged and marked at the end of the year based on how well that business did. And you know, I always thought it would be a really interesting idea if students had these kind of businesses on campus that they needed to see how they could apply sustainability to those businesses right there. Uh, and, and, and learn that that way. You also have a growing number of resources online, a lot more than I can show here. But just to give you a quick uh, introduction to some of them, at the top, uh, there's a platform called Open I IDEO. Uh, MIT has a platform that's similar to this that's focused on climate change. And what these platforms are doing is they have organizations that are posing challenges to the general public. Uh, and this challenge here that was on the website when I took a screenshot was how might we restore vibrancy in cities and regions facing economic decline. And anybody can submit proposals to answer that challenge. And if your proposal is chosen, you can win fame, you can win fa fortune, you can win neither of the two. Uh, but you know, it's an interesting way to get involved in some of these international discussions. At the bottom, we have uh, Welcome to Energyville. There are quite a few games that are being developed online that aren't just for kids. These are for adults. These are for students. Uh, they're quite fun. This game is you have to run a city uh, over, I think it's a 10-year period or something like that. Uh, quite a few big, and this is developed by The Economist and Chevron. And there are quite a few business, uh, businesses that are developing these games around sustainability uh, to be used by their employees, but they also put them online that anybody can use them for free. Continuing around our circle, uh, careers, of course, careers is what students are talking about before they even start the program. I do a lot of workshops with students around careers, trying to get students to understand that they can get involved in sustainability without having to go specifically into a job that says the word sustainability in it. Uh, some of the advice that I give them is that you know there are lots of ways that you can find to bring sustainability into your job. There are quite a few companies that are very active in this area, and the idea is that you know if they have a strong sustainability strategy, what's happening is that increasingly this is being, becoming part of everybody's job in the company. It also, in a sense, gives you, a, uh, you know, an open area to bring up some of these issues because it is already important to the company. The other thing that's of interest to students often that I've found is that those companies that aren't as active in sustainability, if you get involved in the green teams that exist in those companies or you start one, what I'm finding more and more is when the CEO does get interested in sustainability, the first place he goes is the green team. And I'm seeing a lot of people that are moving from this green team where they're just doing this kind of as an extra work activity 
to being promoted to being head of sustainability or head of you know, innovation and sustainability, et cetera. I've seen that happen quite a bit. So that's another way for students to get involved indirectly. There's also lots of different programs within businesses that students can get involved in. 3M gives their employees 15 to 20 percent of their time to do whatever project they want related to work. And a lot of their employees are finding are doing sustainability related projects. Career services in different schools are trying to figure out how they can advise their students in this area. Uh, with mixed results, there's a little bit of everything happening out there, but there are some really good examples. Very quickly, uh, Thunderbird has a three-day CSR track where they bring students to a range of mainstream businesses that are looking at sustainability. Uh, ESADE in Spain has an interesting approach with speed dating. They actually invite a lot of local businesses and they get to sit down for two minutes with different students to tell them what they're doing. And it's a great way of raising awareness about some of these local businesses that are active in this area. Finally, we've got alumni. And alumni are really important as well. It's important to provide a resource for alumni, especially those alumni that are looking at these issues now in their job but didn't have the chance to learn about them during business school. A lot of schools are developing networks for alumni working in this area. Copenhagen Business School has a strong sustainability network for alumni with lots of heads of sustainability of, of, lo of local and national companies. They then invite a lot of these companies, uh, these individuals into the classroom to be guest speakers and, and, and guest lecturers. University in Stellenbosch, their alumni actually develop an elective around sustainability and teach it an elective around nonprofit management. So that's another uh, approach. This is a survey that was done by Accenture and the UN Global Compact in 2010. And the survey found that one in four CEOs said that the lack of skills and knowledge among senior and middle management was one of the top three barriers to them in implementing an integrated and strategic company-wide approach to sustainability. So this is a very big opportunity as well for you to create executive training programs and, and to bring executives and senior managers and managers back onto your campuses to work with them around sustainability issues. Uh, there's a lot of demand for this. I'm finding in a lot of countries the NGOs are kind of stealing up uh, this opportunity away from the business school. So we're going to do another poll. Um, if we could switch to the poll. And this one is, how much exposure do you feel your students are getting to sustainability? If you could all take a moment to just pick the box that most relates to your program. I mean, there are lots of other ways that you can get students exposed uh, to sustainability. In the time that we've got, you know, I, I've tried to give you as many examples. And I have a few more examples that I'm going to share with you after the poll. Uh, but uh, if you have some other examples of things that you're doing, please feel free to share those in the chat area, and we can bring those up after. Um, as I say, I always change the examples in my presentations when I give them. So I'd love to feature some of your examples in my presentations moving forward. OK, great. So we do have found that some schools, 64% is the biggest. Uh, quite a bit, 21%. Too much. Zero. OK. So we do have quite a few people that are uh, exposing their students. OK. So let's get back to the presentation. We've got a few final words uh, to send you off on your way to uh, really incorporating sustainability a little more into your program. First, think about it strategically. Uh, a lot of schools have quite a few things happening on campus when it comes to sustainability. But they're not always aware that all of these different things are happening. So really try to bring these, these together and to think about how uh, sustainability makes more, most sense to your business school, to your program. Make it useful and relevant. This is the most important message that I can send to faculty. If you're bringing up sustainability issues, try to really Make sure that you bring it up in a way that is going to be useful to the students that are going into mainstream businesses and how they can apply these issues and these ideas to those businesses. Approach it from a range of different angles. Bring in guest speakers, have case study competitions, uh, get involved in events, but also give students the opportunity to work with local companies. This is fantastic for the local companies to get some additional resources and to look at some issues that they probably probably don't have the time 
uh, or the energy at the moment to look at. And for students, it's a fantastic opportunity to get them more engaged and involved. Practice what you teach. Also look at what's happening on, on campus in the business school as a business. And find ways to get the students involved. It's a great way uh, to teach them more about sustainability as well. Get engaged in the discussion. There are lots of discussions happening around sustainability. A lot of the networks that you're already involved in, academic networks, are probably looking at these issues in some way or another. But also take a look at the business and NGO networks looking at sustainability. I know a lot of them are actually looking to have more academic partners involved in the discussion. And this is a really good networking opportunity as well to find ways that you can partner with some of these businesses to provide programs not just for their employees, but also bring a lot of their knowledge to your students. Everyone has a role to play. We were saying before about how uh, for the business to get involved, everybody in that business needs to, to play a role and get engaged. It's the same in the business school. Get the faculty involved, get career services, facilities, the students, the deans and directors. Everybody needs to get involved and, and, and should get involved. Stay positive. This is a very strong message. I'm amazed at how many events I'm still sitting in on at universities where sustainability is presented as a uh, uh, kind of end of the world scenario. We have to do something if not. Uh, you know, that's true in a sense, but at the same time, sustainability is a very exciting and innovative field. And this is the reason that people are getting engaged in it, not because we have to, but because people want to. And students in, in this generation, they want to get excited about these issues. So be positive, be constructive about, about these issues when you bring them up. One size does not fit all. There are a lot of different ways to incorporate sustainability into your program. So be inspired by the way that other schools do it, but look at doing it in a way that makes most sense to you. And this will make your school unique as well and uh, attract more students to your school. Become a resource around sustainability for your students, but also for your alumni for your community, for the countries that are in your region and in your country. And keep it going. As we were saying, there's no one way to do this. It's really a, a field that's changing on a regular basis. So keep looking at these issues. And don't, my final piece of advice is to, to have fun with it. Don't be afraid uh, to try out some new things. You know, I love examples of schools doing crazy and innovative things. I don't think they're nearly enough. So I'm going to share with you quickly four uh, examples of things that are happening in, in other areas that maybe you can get inspired from. The top left corner, this is a bank. There are quite a few banks in Japan and insurance companies in the US where they put coffee shops in the front of their premises. And what they do in the coffee shops is they have classes around finance and advisors, and it's a very open and welcoming area for people to come in and learn questions about finance. And I always thought it would be interesting if business schools would have these coffee shops in the front where people in the community, whether it's businesses or organizations, could come and get advice and have students give them advice around sustainability issues. Um, another example down at the bottom, uh, the green painting. This is worth $15,000. And this painting is found in one of three hotels in Melbourne, Australia. The, the idea is that if you can find the painting and steal it without anybody noticing, you can keep it. And fine, we don't want people stealing things from our business schools, but one idea is that, you know, the idea is that you could pose seemingly impossible questions to your students and see what kind of answers they come up with. There are lots of challenges that we have in the sustainability and business sector, and why not see what students could come up with to maybe solve some of these challenges. Uh, one of these challenges is what is the value of an endangered rhinoceros? And we see the, this picture at the bottom right. And you know, why not have uh, a finance class or have uh, a different MBA class where the theme is seeing what the students come up with and the kinds of discussions that you can come up with around this question. The final picture, just at the top right, uh, this is a, a football team in Mexico which is entirely run by fans over the internet. There are no coaches, no directors, nothing. All the decisions about this team are made over the internet. And this team is doing relatively well. So this is another idea that perhaps you don't want to relinquish all control over your programs to your students and your, the university community, but perhaps look and see if you went out to the university community what kind of ideas they might have in terms of how you can bring sustainability to your students. Just to finish off, I wanted to introduce you to Primetime. Primetime, I have two blogs, one on my website which is more around sustainable business 
But I just started a few months ago a blog in collaboration with the UN Global Compact called Prime Time. And this brings together best practices around how to mainstream sustainability into business education. There are quite a few examples up there. I'm putting up one in the next couple of weeks around with a range of games, as we were talking about before. If you have any examples you'd like to share, I'd love to hear from you, so please do get in touch. Uh, and I'll, you all get copies of the slides, so you all have all of my contact details, and please feel free to get in touch. So uh, yeah, so we've got some time for questions. If you have any questions, or if you'd like to share some of your examples of what it is that you're doing in your business schools around sustainability, I'd love to hear about that. Great. Thank you so much, Giselle, for a very informative uh, presentation with a lot of really interesting ideas. So now we'll go into the question and answer a part of the um, session. Please feel free to go ahead and send in your questions via the chat. Also, if you do have access to your phone or microphone, this is the time to also raise your hand if you'd like to talk to Giselle. The first question I have is, where can I find more resources to help inform faculty about incorporating incorporating sustainability. And if you might want to mention a few, and we'd also be happy to post this information when we send out the email at the end of the presentation. Sure. Uh, for faculty, different schools are taking different approaches. I find in quite a few schools, they will put together uh, booklets where the, some of the, the sustainability champions on campus will actually put together a booklet that has a range of information and share that with all the faculty. And the kind of information, uh, you can go to Places like the Aspen Institute, and uh, if you go to the Beyond Gray Pinstripes website, they actually have lists of quite a few different classes around sustainability, in cor including course outlines. So this is an interesting place to just go through and see how different faculty have incorporated sustainability in, into the different courses, and also look at some of the case studies that they're using and uh, the readings that they've attached to those courses. So I like that resource. Uh, you've got quite a few different case study databases. Um, but also take a look at some of the business examples. The World Business Council for Sustainable Development is a network of businesses involved in sustainability. And on their website, they have a section where businesses have submitted many case studies around how they're looking at different sustainability issues. And that's, it's not an academic resource per se, but it is an interesting resource to take a look at some of these international businesses and, and what they're doing in this area. Um, yeah, so those are a few examples. And going off of that, um, you didn't focus on the check, so a little bit about the case studies, but research in general. What is happening in the business schools area, uh, business schools in the area of research? In research, we're seeing a lot of centers coming up looking at sustainability issues. Right now, I'm hearing a lot of centers that are focusing on creating more case studies um, or looking at how you can embed sustainability in some, into some of the existing case studies. Uh, a lot of the research, too, is around looking at different sustainability issues with local companies and the, how the sustainability is being approached specifically in your region or in your country. Uh, so those are some of the things that, I, that I've been seeing in research. Um, yeah. Great. And for those schools that answered not much, especially for our younger schools, uh, schools that don't have as much um, financing to put towards this topic, what are some interesting first steps, first ways to incorporating sustainability into their programs, especially in regards to low cost? Sure. There, there's so many different ways that you can incorporate sustainability into, into schools. And I've been seeing lately some schools that weren't doing anything, and you know, all of a sudden, within a couple of months, they're doing more than some of the leaders are. So it's a lot of this, it's, it's not necessarily going to cost you anything. It's time and effort in that sense. Um, getting your students involved is uh, really key. And what's great is that every year you have different students that come in uh, with different expertise and different interests. And so you can really build up some interesting experiences that have been initiated by students over the years. Uh, so I would get your students involved and maybe even start by putting together a group of people, uh, some students and some faculty who are really interested in these issues, and even having a brainstorming about how you can move forward. When uh, Babson, when they did their program that I talked about from day one, uh, they didn't put any money into that really to begin with. They had students doing very low budget YouTube videos that were two minutes long where they went and interviewed different people looking at sustainability on campus. And uh, it, was, it was just, it was organized by students and it wasn't something that cost a lot of money, but it really raised awareness about these issues with the students and with the faculty and staff as well. 
You talked um, a little bit earlier about sort of the sense of sustainability is saving the world and some faculty not having, um, you know, not accepting of that approach. What are some different ways of teaching sustainability as a component of good practice versus the saving the world idea? Um, with the saving the world, I mean, I, I found, you don't find it so much now, but when I did my MBA, I found that a lot of the electives that were being offered were electives that were often being run in collaboration with NGOs, and they were often being run in a way uh, and in a language that students weren't able to take and apply to the business sector. And I think that that's what's really important when you're looking at sustainability, is how can your students in your marketing class take these ideas and how do they relate to what it is that they're uh, going to be doing in their marketing jobs? How is this influencing the marketing sector in general? Uh, so really looking at ways to incorporate this into the core courses and into the case study discussions that you're having uh, and into the, the coursework that you're doing rather than presenting it as a completely separate topic. Uh, and this is a way that students then understand not just that these issues are important, because having the faculty incorporate these and not separating them, it sends a very strong message to students. Uh, I've sat in some classes uh, in different business schools where faculty will bring up sustainability in that half an hour before the midterm. And it, it's, in my opinion, that as fine, the students are getting that information, but the problem, the way that they're getting it is sending a message that this is something to the side. This is something that's not important enough to incorporate into your main courses and that you're going to be tested on. This is kind of an extra little you know, tidbit of information for you. So the way that you incorporate this into your discussion, into your class, really sends a strong message to the students. One of the ways that you can do that as well is through the activities and the homework assignments that you give. If it's an operations class and you're looking at audits in companies, incorporate sustainability into that audit in some shape or form. I've met some finance students who have had to go and uh, work with banks and do crunch some numbers around that company, uh, a company that they were going to potentially invest in. And they've been told now to also look at ESG uh, and environmental, social, and government issues related to the companies that they were going to invest in. So that's been kind of incorporated into that assignment is another piece of important information that they need to consider. So if you start looking at there's ways that you can just incorporate sustainability on a regular basis into a lot of the activities that you're already doing in some of your core courses. Thank you so much, uh, Giselle, for, for answering those questions for us. Um, I just want to point out, as we're coming to the end of the presentation, that GBSN is running our own um, video competition, the MBA Challenge, How Can an MBA Change the World? Um, the contest opens March 1st. We're looking for videos of interesting projects that students are doing around the world, uh, around, the, again, the idea of sustainability and responsible management, also you know, interesting and innovative things that they're doing. Uh, the competition does open March 1st. There will be online voting uh, for everyone uh, starting uh, thereafter in April. The winning team will be able to come to our conference, the GBSN Annual Conference in New Delhi this June, June 12th through 13th. Um, we ran this last year. We can go ahead and look at some of the videos of really interesting thing that, things that the students are doing. Um, and also hope that if, if you're not participating through the video, um, it is open to member and non-member institutions. So all the, the business schools joining us should get the word out. Um, it's a really great opportunity to highlight what your students are doing, but also an opportunity for the, uh, for the leading team uh, to come to New Delhi. So we're wrapping up now. Um, perhaps we can do one last question uh, for you, Giselle, and then we'll go ahead and end the webinar. Again, it will be available um, online, both the recorded presentation and also Giselle's um, PowerPoint presentation will be available. We'll also send out some of those links that she mentioned for resources, as well as the MBA challenge uh, competition. So to, to close, the, close the, the session off, Giselle, last question is, what are some low-cost ways for alumni services and career services to be sustainable and encourage and support students to bed sustainability into their careers? Sure, that's a great question. So ways that you can get alumni involved, uh, you'd be a great place to start is to just have to open up uh, an alumni network of people that are interested in sustainability. And often they will start a conversation themselves as well and, and ask them what it is, what kind of resources you could offer them. 
sometimes, you know, a lot of them will be very prepared to come into campus and to help with some of your initiatives, even speaking classes, uh, provide some context to career services as well in terms of placement opportunities, internships for students. Um, so there are lots of different ways to get your alumni involved, and alumni want to get involved in the schools. I know the alumni group that I'm part of, you know, we do everything we can to get involved in different school activities and to help the students. Uh, you can also do what I found works well is have a mentorship program where you can take some of the alumni involved in sustainability and pair them up with current students who are interested in sustainability and uh, to provide some, um, some information that way as well. With career services, inviting different companies onto campus, not just companies that are focused on sustainability, but mainstream companies as well that are looking at sustainability because that sends a very strong message to to the majority of MBA students who aren't looking for sustainability jobs per se. Uh, and a lot of the big companies that, that MBA students are looking at are, are actively involved in sustainability. So having those company representatives coming onto campus and talking not just about the business, but about how important sustainability is to the business, it sends quite a strong message to the students. Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. As a reminder, our next webinar will be Wednesday, March 28th, the Alternative Career Paths for Students, so sort of expanding on the student um, uh, student end of this. Uh, we encourage you to share that information, and registration will be sent out shortly. So thank you again, everyone. Enjoy your Friday and the weekend.